Hey guys, welcome back to what I hope will be the final installment on this set. I had no idea where this project was going to end up when I started, and honestly, it's coming out to be way, way better than I ever expected, which is kind of leading to some problems I'll get to in a moment. Uh, first, I wanted to thank you for all the comments and tips and suggestions. It's been great. Uh, I've had a lot of fun making this. I hope you've had a lot of fun watching it. Uh, I want to touch on a few of the comments uh, I got. Um, one was about painting this transformer. Um, honestly, I was really PO'd that the original one died. Uh, but I was also very happy to have a spare. And I just wanted to pop in and get this set working again so it didn't even occur to me. I don't think it's that bad. It's a little dirty. I cleaned it up a little bit. But yeah, there's a little bit of surface, light surface corrosion here and there. But I'm not going to take it back out to paint it. As far as doing autopsy on the original one, it seems like uh, the primary is probably shorted. Well, I shouldn't say that. Something is badly shorted because this draws over 4 amps with no load on it. I do not know how much work it might be to take this apart. Perhaps I'll try at some point, but uh, I'd rather get on with finishing some projects and get to some new ones. But yes, I am curious to know exactly what the problem was, as I know some of you are, so I'll, I'll try to get to it. Um, so, yeah, this set is cleaning up a lot better than I ever dreamed it would. I guess all that uh, nicotine and tar or whatever it was uh, really preserved it. I mean, I'm still amazed that this tuner came out looking so nice. And Yes, I have not replaced that cap yet. I, I, I will get to it. I'm kind of curious to see what effect uh, replacing it will have. I expect very little. It's just a bypass cap, I think, on the B-plus supply. Um, so, one dilemma was the original CRT, or the original um, head unit back has a defect in the plastic. Uh, pardon me while I grab it. It's got this wavy bump thing. Only on the outside, not the inside. It doesn't seem to be, well, I don't know what it is, but it's there. So, I originally was going to let just get this set working and leave it warts and all as just a funky example of a working predictive. But it's, as the nicer it gets, the more I'm thinking, well, why don't I just keep making it look nicer? Because I've got a spare back. So instead of letting the spare back sit on a shelf, while well, I use the one that's got the flaw, why don't I just go with the good one? So that's what I'm going to do for now. So it's not as discolored and it doesn't have that weird bump on it. However, I will use the original back plate that's got this note about it being rewired. And something I noticed when I was putting the socket back on, there's this little glass nipple here, that's where they would have sealed off the vacuum. Now, the original CRTs to go in predictors have a really short neck. That was an innovation at the time. They're less than 11 inches from front to the rear. Now, there are a lot of 17 inch. 110 degree deflection CRTs, over a dozen of them. But most of them have longer necks, including this one. But this one just fits, but I wonder, did somebody snap that nipple off to make it just fit in here? Because it kind of looks like it was snapped off. Now somebody would really have to have some nerve to do that and have the CRT blow up in their face. So I don't know that somebody did that. That could just be the way it was made. I don't know, but man, it just barely fits. So that's that. Got to put that back together. Got the flyback cover back on. Got to put the IF shield back in place. But this, this is just about done. And then there are there's a whole page of lead dressing notes in the service info. And I'm going to try to go over as best I can. I know some of the lead cabling is supposed to get wrapped up around this and and so on and so forth. And yes, I know. I thank you for all the tips that these are called P-clamps. Uh, I will have no trouble finding them in the future, I'm sure. Linearity control. Uh, I did pick up this 5 water 2K pot, which would absolutely work, but it's kind of huge. It's not going to fit in the original hole if I enlarged it. Great, but it bumps into this connector up here. 
but for now linearity it's not something you would adjust very often I can tweak this resistor value and get it looking okay until I can find a, uh, a more suitable replacement um, I got a comment um, <laughs> in my most recent video and I've got some in the past about it being a mess and how can I work in this mess I don't like working in this mess Guess it's a messy workbench. I wish I had a much larger workbench and I wish things were better organized, but I have limited time, limited resources, so it's either I can spend my time cleaning up and organizing, or I can make more videos and they'll be a little bit messy. I prefer to make more videos, so that's what I'm going to keep doing for now. Uh, but for sure, I mean, I would just want to get rid of this. I don't need, this is just a door. Uh, I, need, I need a larger workbench. I, wanna, I, got, I got the space for it. I can... I can move these consoles down. I can make this workbench twice as long as it is. Um, what else? What else? Ah, oh, yes, the arms. The arms. I got a ton of comments about the brass arms and all kinds of techniques. So, briefly, let's see. I've done a few experiments on these arms. So, the most recent one is the one in the foreground here, where I got most of the pitting out and went over it with a brass brush and tried to get it as nice looking as I could. The one on the left, I did not get rid of all the pitting, but it still looks okay. So just briefly, some of the suggestions I got were whew, electroplate it with copper and then zinc and then heat it up and the two will fuse an alloy and make it gold looking. Yes, I was aware of that technique. I think that'd be a lot of work. And I'm dubious that I could heat these evenly with something like a propane torch and get an even color the whole length. So I'm not crazy about trying that out. Brass leaf, I had no idea that existed. It's similar, very similar to gold leaf from what I read. Um, that's a possibility. It might even fill in some of the pitting. I have no idea what it's like to work with, but it's fairly inexpensive. I'm also wondering how it would be because I'd have to use, it comes in small sheets. So what is it? It's very, very, very thin brass sheet. Um, like tissue paper, thinner than tissue paper. And you put on a special adhesive and then you, you kind of float it on here and you use a, an embossing tool and you you sort of, uh, well, glue <laughs> brass onto the steel tubing. Uh, I wonder how the seams would turn out though. Um, some thought suggestions about um, powder coating it. Uh, or using uh, car tech, various car uh, coatings. But yeah, they do look great, and possibly I don't have a spray rig or anything though, so I'm not quite sure how that would go. Keep in mind, I have a lot of these sets to do. I have seven or eight of the 17 inch and a few of the 21s to do, so I've got a bunch of arms to do. So that's why I want to try to kind of find a, a technique that's fairly easy to do and not destructive in case you know, I ever do want to get them professionally replated. Speaking of which, um, I do know somebody who has. In fact, there's a couple 21-inch arms on eBay right now that have been replated. I'll tell you, one of the problems is, if you send these out, time is money to them, and to get the good finish, they need to get all, out all the pits. They will grind this. They will grind the heck out of this. They probably just grind these little uh, pins here just right off. I know somebody who had one of these knobs done, and they ground it down, and they lost all the detail when they did it. Uh, so that's one reason I'm, I'm, you know, in addition to being expensive and having to wait and having them out of my possession, um, who knows what I would get back. Uh, but what I wanted to talk about right now is a suggestion I got from a few of you. Well, take this and clear coat it with uh, like some high gloss lacquer. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go heat this up again and go over with a brass brush to get a nice fresh coat on there. And then I'm going to shoot it with this premium, pre-catalyzed gloss Mohawk lacquer. The can's a little rusty, but it's, it's good stuff. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, almost done putting this all back together. Got the cabinet just about ready to put back together, so we are definitely in the home stretch. Oh, and thanks for all the suggestions about wire. I will definitely try out some of them. It looks like I may have to go with the type that's stranded but stiff, stiffened, um, because it just 
it seems like higher voltage solid core is just really not widely available anymore. In other words, the stuff that they used. 22 gauge, 24 gauge ish wire with fairly thin insulation. Basically this stuff, this plastic stuff that just doesn't seem to be available anymore. Okay, here we go. Uh, one thing I've noticed is that the more you go over it, the better it looks. But I primarily have been putting the brush along the length of the tubing, and that's where it's got some fine scratches. So anyways, uh, now for the lacquer. Now ideally you would use specialty lacquer for me uh, metal or brass. I've had some issues with using just generic lacquer where you kind of like a flash tarnishing of it from the solvents or something, I'm not sure, but give it a shot and see what happens. So here is the before. And here it is with a couple quick coats of lacquer and kind of what I expected. It looks the same. <laughs> nice thing is this stuff dries real fast. I just did this about five minutes ago. Um, maybe a tad shinier, but you can certainly still see the fine scratches. But it won't tarnish. So this is what I was saying at the end of the last video. If I get the whole thing looking like this, I am totally fine with that for now. I just don't think I'm ever going to get a mirror finish like real brass plating just using, you know, my little home basement workshop here. But uh, that I think would be respectable on this set. Well, we're on the topic of brass. Let's take a little look at this antenna. I've never actually extended it before. These are very often missing because a lot of these sets ended up in uh, motel hotel chains where they were hardwired into a closed circuit system. Um, and the ones that are present are usually broken off. But this one is almost completely intact. Just the very tip of it is gone. And it's a pretty distinctive feature on these sets, so it's really nice to have one in any condition. Uh, so what I'm curious to see is how well will this clean up? It looks pretty miserable. But assuming that this is solid brass, uh, it's not a problem. It'll just be a little bit of effort, but uh, I'll grab some metal polish and let's just do a little test here on this middle section here and see how it goes. Oh yeah, that's going to polish up real nice. That's That's real brass. And to give you some idea of the difference, <laughs> there's how shiny you can make the real deal versus my brush method. It's also a little bit different color. Depending on the ratio of copper to tin, you get very different looking brass. So the stuff on the antenna is a little bit more orangey. And uh, the very gold colored arm. It'll take a bit of work for sure, but uh, it should come out just gleaming. I'm starting to put the set back together. I just about got every last trace of discoloration off of the front. I think a little bit of brown here and there was rust bleeding through underneath the paint. I used a little bit of navel jelly on a Q-tip and rubbed it until it came out. There's still a little bit in the holes, or I think there's actually rust down in the little pinhole. I could probably dab a little white paint in there to take care of that, but otherwise it's getting kind of obsessive. I think it's fine as it is. Uh, I did polish up the antenna. There's something kind of curious about that. Is the outermost piece is steel. The inner sections are all brass. I can't imagine they did that to save money. It's probably because they needed a little bit more strength in the outer part. It connects down to this little ball joint. That explains too why I've seen a number of these sets where this looked silvery and I thought, hmm, I wonder if that's a replacement. Now I'm thinking, no, it's the original and somebody polished it up. And this, this too, I believe, originally had kind of that same type of coating like this trim piece had in the front. 
And you can see this is brilliant now, but it's just because it's just bare aluminum. Uh, and it just as soon as I touch it, the fingerprints show up really, really uh, strongly. So I eventually need to coat it with something or it's going to uh, discolor. But whatever they had on here, I think they used on various other parts of the set, which may very well have been in some kind of tinted lacquer or something. I really don't think it was any type of plating. What? What are you doing? Ah, there goes that tube box. I'll tell you the things this dog does. <laughs> oh, oh well, he did remind me though. I did find my high voltage wire. So, getting back to the topic of wire, just very briefly, this is a hunk of high voltage wire I got off of eBay a while ago. This stuff is like rated for like 30,000 volts or so. So this, if I ever need any high voltage anode lead, I've got plenty of that. It's the, uh, the medium voltage, again, as I've been coming to find out, if you know the right search terms, it helps a lot. Stop eating that. <laughs> uh, but apparently the MV for medium voltage is a term. So this would be HV high voltage wire, there's LV low voltage, and MV medium voltage. Now turning our attention to this area, that's where the clock and the channel selector go. Here's the original face plate that came with this, comprised of two pieces, a piece of painted aluminum and then a uh, piece of plastic that goes over it. And you see this is pretty miserable. It's filthy. I know when I clean it, the, what's left of the metallic coating will pretty much come off and it's got some cracks. Inner part's fine, uh, of course, because it was protected. Um, but I did find one, amazingly, somebody must have parted out a siesta set and they sold some of it on eBay so I've got this which is still far from perfect it's got cracks in it and again the metallic stuff's coming off but at least it's got some of the printing on here so now we can see the functions on the clock so we got on off auto and alarm then the other side 0 to 120 I don't know exactly how all those functions work but uh, that's what the printing would say, or does say. So that to go in like so. Now, amazingly, somebody has a siesta set. Eric scored one recently and posted some photos on Facebook, and it's uh, it's in remarkable condition. So I'm going to include some of those now, so you get some idea of one would look like in really, really good condition. So as you can see, I've also got the head unit back on. Uh, one thing that's driving me nuts is I cannot find the metal band that holds the front of this on. I'm generally really good about keeping all the bits and pieces together with sets. I know from watching the first installment of this series way back when, when I got this set, I did take this off in the garage. I've looked through the garage. It's kind of messy, but I did a pretty good sweep and I did not find it. So I'm inclined to think I brought it inside because I usually keep everything together. So it's probably down here in the basement somewhere. It's a large, unwieldy thing, so I'm sure I've stuck it somewhere kind of out of the way. <laughs> but if I have to, I can use this one from another set. That goes around like so and holds the front on to the back. So all these slots that fit into ears on the corresponding front and back. All right, so that brings us again back to the arms. This one I just temporarily put back in place. The other one's off because I am working on it. Um, all my brass bristle brush attachment thingies did arrive in the mail sooner than I thought they would. I uh, put them in a box somewhere around here. I'll pull them out in a sec. But before I get to that, I decided I would just take the plunge and polish up the arms. At first, I used a Dremel tool with kind of an abrasive wheel attachment. That was a bad idea. 
because with something this small, what would happen is I went around, it would occasionally put a, di a di kind of a divot if I held the, the too long in one spot. Um, I did an okay job. I mean, it certainly ground away the surface a bit and got out some of the pits, but in hindsight, I regret it doing that a bit. What's been more effective, I've found, is to use a variety of grits and wet sand it down. So starting with um, like 80 grit and then 220, uh, then 320, then 600, and so on. So I'm down to the point where I'm pretty much using 600 grit on this. And what I'm doing, it's a little tedious, a little messy, but I'm taking some Noxon metal polish. I could just use water, I suppose, but this has some extra abrasive in it. It's very similar to brass, so get some of that on there. And uh, take some sandpaper. Some. There's a piece. Uh, and wrap it around. And just do this <laughs> over the whole length. Uh, it actually works really well. And then after the 600, I'll do 800. And uh, then I have a thousand. And then at that point, um, either semi-chrome or I'll just go to putting on the brass. And clean it off. And that does a pretty nice job. Got to do a little bit more. It's not, uh, still a few blemishes here and there and a few scratches from the coarser. And it's still not going to be perfect. There's still a few rust pits here and there. But it's going to be a heck of a lot better than it was. I found it uh, worked out quite well to clamp just a hand drill to my workbench with the largest of the bristle brush attachments. And uh, heated this up while uh, wearing gloves and, you know brushed up against it and a pretty much finished one and I know this one is going to go on the such such that this will be the most visible part so I put more effort into this side than the back side but even so it's, it's all looking all right a few scratches here and there that I wasn't able to quite sand out and like this end I know goes up inside the collar so there's no point in spending a lot of effort on that I'm going to do one final pass over the whole thing and then clear coat it. But overall, I gotta say, I think that uh, turned out pretty well. Nowhere near as shiny as, say, uh, this bit down here. But, you know, that I'm just not going to be able to do. That's how the arms would have originally been, like a mirror shine. But, yeah. It's not quite the same color either. Brass color can vary by quite a bit depending on the ratio of uh, copper and tin, I guess. So, well, that's, that's the color this ended up being. It's more of gold maybe than brass, but hey. One arm down, one to go. Is it perfect? No. There's still a, a pit here and there, a ding here and there, and it's not as shiny as, let's say, this plating, but I think it's pretty respectable. I put the end cap on and started polishing that, and of course it's just got some kind of thin coating and it's steel underneath, so <laughs> I may try using the brass brush on that as well. And here's the other one. Uh, this The pitting on this seems to be even worse, and it just takes so much work to get that all out but if you don't I mean it looks okay uh, or I did some tests leaving the pitting in but at least I want to try to get some of it out like I did on the other one alright so that brings us to the screen cover which has got some scuffs and some cracks And the scuffs and 
Uh, scratches are deep enough. I think I'm going to have to wet sand this to get them out. I tried going it with Novus number two. For example, there's one in here. And uh, it's just a little too deep. I'd have to be going forever. Novus number two, for those of you who don't know, is a plastic polishing product. They make three types, one, two, and three. And two seems to be the most effective. It's a really fine abrasive. It's similar to metal polish or toothpaste or this Noxon metal polish. It's a really fine abrasive in a liquid buffing compound in other words and I got some in here these are actually quite deep um, that's pr that's the worst of it uh, I'm gonna have to sand down quite a bit of material to get those out maybe a bit more than I really want to one problem is if, if you sand down one area a lot it'll make an optical distortion you kind of want the whole thing to be an even thickness all over so it's one reason I'm a little wary of that uh, and then there are some cracks this being the most visible one I've never tried doing anything about these uh, it's been suggested um, maybe a uh, windshield crack repair kit could work maybe I mean that's designed for glass not this so much. Or um, some plastic solvent I might try doing. The idea is you put some type of solvent or filler that um, either by capillary action gets drawn into the crack or you use a little bit of suction to force it into the crack. And if it's got a similar index of refraction, it should disappear or at least become a lot less visible. I've got a cover that's got uh, worse damage than this. I'm willing to try it on. The other crack is down there, which is more visible, but it's not in the clear part of the screen cover. Uh, and that'd be a little wary of too, because if I use any kind of solvent, it's probably going to wick through the other side and uh, attack the paint. These are reverse painted around the edge, and even if the crack became less visible, it might mess up the paint. I've never tried touching one of these up. I see matching the color being a little bit tricky. There's, there's a little chip of it gone there too, but something else I'll have to experiment with someday because I've got a few of these that have some paint loss. Some more fine scratches up there. So, anyways, for the first pass I'll use some like thousand grit sandpaper and get out the worst of the scuffs and the, the scratches and then buff it out and then see how bad those scratches are there. Slight change of plans, actually. I got to thinking about it, and somebody warned me about this, too, in one of the comments, that if I was to wet sand this, polish it, grit and debris is going to work its way into that crack. And then if I try a solvent or filler kit, it's going to trap the crud in there, and it's definitely going to be visible. So, I am just going to put the screen back on as is. I cleaned up the inside using some Plexo anti-static plastic glass cleaner and I'm going to reattach it. I also cleaned this glass CRT up with some Windex. I gave up on trying to find the original band that came with this since I do plan on taking this apart some time when I try to attempt to repair the crack. Hopefully by then I will have found the band maybe. So to reattach it, the opposite of taking it apart, I need to take off this trim. Uh, wrap the strap around and there's a screw on either side you tighten down take the decorative band hook it up to spring down here and well that's it all right let's see how painlessly I can do this here's what one of the screws looks like I attach the other end of it with the hope that I can do this relatively easily, so we'll put this in place. Line up the ears. And then I'm hoping I can just wrap this around. It's cured on the other side.
All right, that actually wasn't too bad. I hooked it up down here and just kind of and just popped it back on. So that is that. Oh, so got one arm left to do. Uh, still working on getting the last bit of the pitting off, and then I'll brass it and then clear coat it. here obviously and uh, I need to do a little bit of cleaning on this back cover. Now the base I did a little bit of light cleaning on it I believe that also has that type of thin faux brassing on it but it's actually in pretty decent condition so I'll just use a little bit of warm water maybe some very mild detergent and clean that up. I should have done it before I put this head unit on. Although it's no, there's nothing attached, I can just lift this right off. So. Um, yeah, I can just lift that off and clean it up. Uh, hmm. One final thing I wanted to try, or do a little comparison of, is the one I'm working on right now. I just did a quick pass with some metallic gold brass spray paint. The number of you suggested I use paint. And I could, and it does look alright. The one thing I don't like about metallic paint is they tend to be sparkly. As is the uh, gold paint that's on this cabinet. But, I mean, certainly um, it's a huge time saver to do this, and I may do it on some other sets until such time as I have a better setup to do brass plating. And then I would clear cut it to protect it, but I just don't like that sparkly metallic flake kind of paint look. That, uh, that uh, At least every metallic paint I've ever tried, uh, they all have that same kind of look to them. Alright, so what next? Uh, I think I'll work on this area, the clock and the control panel. So these are the two options I've got. I'll try cleaning this one up for the heck of it. <laughs> well, the recess numbers are just completely gone. But even on the original, they weren't recessed very much, so there's, there's really no hope of trying to paint that in. They're very shallowly done. If they were even recessed at all, it might have been some kind of uh, screen printing, now that I think about it. Um, at least this one has some of the printing left on it. Whereas this is just barely there. But, anyways, they both have the same problem. So the way this is attached, supposed to be attached, is there should be a plastic tab sticking up on both of these, and they're both broken off. That fits in, should fit into a slot of the chassis, and then it swings down, and there's a single screw. Well, all I'm going to have for now is that single screw, which means that it's going to be able to, to do that. Which may very well be why, well, not so much this one, but this one certainly has some horrible stress cracks around there. So I'm guessing something might have yanked on this, and that just all shattered out down there. Like everything else in this set, it cleaned up very easily with a minimum of effort. Again, simple green, warm water. So now I uh, have even more of a dilemma. So this has more cracks, but the outer metallic coating is actually in better condition. And the printing for the functions, no, it's not as nice, but it's somewhat there. Still there, like the 0 to 120. Hmm. Well, at least for starters, they'll go with this. For no other reason than because it's the one that came with the set. So it'll look something like that. I think I'll wrap things up. So now I guess this won't be the final installment. Uh, 
Uh, did a little bit more work putting things together. I got the tuner in place and I located my stash of feet. These are modern ones, but they're very, very similar to the originals. The height is the same. Unfortunately, though, they are not the same color. So I got three out of the four original feet. Um, and unfortunately, the one, of, the one that's missing is one of the feet in the front, so it's going to be visible. So I think at least I have to replace both feet in front, so at least they match. I think I'll leave the back two original. Uh, and that'll be it for now. Um, next installment, hopefully I'll have the other arm done, get the chassis slid inside, and then I expect there's going to be a whole boatload of tweaking and adjustments to make after taking that yoke off. That's the problem with taking the yoke off. I mean, yeah, I needed to be rewired and all that, but now I got to tweak it. I know the leveling was off a little bit. So the picture probably won't be centered anymore. Um, so there's a bunch of little fine tweaks on that yoke. There are two magnets, I believe, for centering. Uh, and there's one to compensate for linearity de uh, issues. Um, and then, uh, of course, just height and width and, um, and vertical linearity and so on and so forth. But uh, hopefully <laughs> in the next installment we'll have it all wrapped up. That's it for now.